G'day viewers, this is Troy from the Troy's Digital Arts channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a couple of films that I've shot and processed. One is Kodak Eastman Ectochrome, 16mm movie film, and the other is Kodak Ectocolor. Both are vintage films from the late 50s and early 60s. First, I'm going to talk about the, the Ectochrome. This is pretty much a milestone that I've made lately uh, in terms of shooting vintage movie film. This is literally the oldest colour movie film I've shot to date. This is Kodak Eastman Ectochrome ER Type 7257 16mm colour reversal movie film. Um, and this film, on research, uh, made its... I think it made its first appearance around about 1959. I'm looking up some some old like historical notes and stuff. So it would have been first made its appearance around 1959, and it was superseded by a later ectochrome type. Forgot the number, but it was superseded in 1964. So this film would have been made sometime between 1959 and 1964. So we'll say early 1960s. This this particular film was made. And uh, yeah, I first uh, I first shot a length of this film in a in my 110 type camera. I rolled it up inside of a 110 film cartridge and shot it in my Fujika 350 zoom 110 camera. And I I rated this film one ISO, which I typically do for my for my um, early colour films of the, of the late 50s, early 60s. And sure enough, this film worked quite nicely. I developed it in C41, 15 minutes at 20 degrees, uh, like I do with my, with much of my ectochromes these days. And yeah, it worked quite nicely when I shot it at one ISO, um, which I used an F16 aperture and I exposed on the I exposed this film on a on a on a hazy sunny afternoon it was like two two to four second exposures uh, depending on depending on what I'm shooting and depending how cloudy it got um, but yeah it worked beautifully and uh, the the actual photos are on my Flickr website of this particular length of negative that I processed anyway after that I decided to roll half of the half of this hundred meter length of film inside of inside of a 16 millimeter magazine i learned i actually uh learned how to to roll film inside of these cartridges off off a, off a youtube user on who uh did a demo video on it i've forgotten his name but i but but the link is in the description below and so yeah i put I rolled the film up and um, shot it inside this Bell & Howe 16mm movie camera that I've shot my Kodachrome cartridges. Yeah, this was uh, from a Kodachrome 2 cartridge. Um, I shot the film and, and yeah, it worked quite nicely. Um, so, yeah, I shot it inside of this camera. Um, I had trouble shooting the, the film because it actually stopped here and there. Um, probably my dodgy-ass way of loading it in, it kind of, or maybe the film kind of got a bit sticky or something, but yeah, it's, it's like I I uh, shot it and and then it kind of stopped like that. I had to pull the cartridge out, then push it back in and then roll the film again and each time it stopped, do the same thing. <laughs> well, anyway, enough yapping on about, about the... Uh, shooting of the film now it's time to show you the results i'll get me led light here and yeah the film worked beautifully so I'll, as you can see you can see color negatives this i developed this film the same way 15 minutes in c41 as a color negative blicks for eight minutes You can see color negatives.
Yeah, when I was shooting this film, I, I forgot to mention, um, yeah, rating it at one ISO, um, it was a, no, again a hazy sunny afternoon. I, uh, what I did was I just pretty much, I set the speed of the camera to 16 frames a second, which I typically do for my vintage films, and I, I, uh, I set the aperture to its widest aperture of, of f1.9. So that pretty much covered for the for the loss of sensitivity for the films to make it work. So that's the beauty with the old films. Um, they are sure they may be about one ISO in sensitivity these days, but you can still shoot them in sunny weather at a using the widest aperture on your camera and at, at a at a uh, modest frame rate of 16, 18 frames a second, which is a typical rating for 8mm and Super 8 film. So yeah, the film worked beautifully. And it, and um, yeah, when I get this digitised, it's going to make beautiful pictures. So yeah, this is a new milestone for me. This is literally the oldest colour film I've shot to date. Movie film, that that is. Pre previous, my previous record was was some um, Ag for Colour double eight millimetre movie film from 1967, in which um, yeah it worked, um, but I gave it way too much exposure or way too much develop time, and it came out grossly overdeveloped. This one I reckon will make very nice pictures because it's it's certainly not overdeveloped. Anyway, that's the whole entire film on the rack. And that pretty much covers for the Eastman Ectochrome. Now the next subject is Ectocolor. So here I have I'm gonna move my 16 I'll move the length of film out of the way. Uh, here I have the Kodak Ectocolor sheet film. This is 5 by 7 inch, 12.7 by 17.8 centimeter sheet film. This this particular film, uh, sheet film, has an expiry date of April 1957. And uh, yeah, I to shoot this film, I don't. I had to. Um, Slice it up in the dark um, to sizable to sizable sheets to fit inside my cameras and yeah um, on shooting this film I've and shooting and developing this film I've learnt a few things. Um, firstly, yeah, this particular film um, I've shot Hector Color film before um, from the 60s. Uh, my 100 foot long 70 millimeter Hector Chrome film. Uh, that I can process in C41, but this particular film um, is uh, is pretty much. I've didn't take me long to figure out this this film um, is pretty much pretty much like the early 50s coat of color film types, which which I can't bleach and fix. Um, otherwise, I pretty much lose the contrast of the image. So yeah, I had to do a skip bleach developed for this particular film to make it work. Secondly, this film is is like very low ISO rated. Um, I think its original ISO rating was probably about 5 ISO um, ASA back then. Oh yeah, it's it's a uh, develop process was a uh, B41 developer. Uh, but yeah, that's that's from what I've learnt about on the photo memorabilia site. Well, anyway, yeah, so I decided to develop it a skip bleach method like I do with the early 50s coda colours. Well, anyway, it being 5 ISO, I decided, I originally decided to rate it about 0.25 ISO, 0.5 ISO on shooting. Unfortunately, uh, the, my, first few sh my first few cut sheets that I've shot yielded um, pretty much no image or very, very, very faint images after... after and this was after scanning it and adjusting the light levels to the extremities to get some form of an image. 
but I decided to really, really jack up the exposure on shooting this particular film. Um, this time I shot two two lengths of uh, two uh, sheets of the film, two cut sheets of the film inside my Kodak Brownie cameras. I rated it 0.25 ISO and gauge exposure for that. Then I then I sort of like doubled the exposure length and double exposure and then doubled it again. So instead of shooting it about four seconds at an f11 aperture on a hazy sunny afternoon i shot it at 16 seconds at, a, at an f11 aperture and lo and behold it's yielded some visible faint but visible negatives still still looks very underexposed but on when i scan it it's gonna it's gonna yield it's going to yield pictures after yeah after some light adjustments. So it worked. It worked with ex with some extreme overexposure. That's because this particular film has actually degraded very badly in sensitivity. There are some a lot of my films they tend to work consistently with the ISO I pick for them, but some films do um, not conform to the rules because either they've grossly degraded in terms of sensitivity or they've they're still retained a lot of sensitivity in this case this particular film is very 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 insensitive and I, and I believe I can shoot a, a hundred year old film <laughs> with and get better results than with this film so yeah this film has degraded very badly but with extreme exposure it will still work which I've shown you in those negatives so I'll just show the negatives once again so there um, that that particular shot is of the gas chambers at Port Kembla Steelworks and this other one is the uh, warehouse um, the warehouses um, across um, the road from Cringilla Station. Cringilla Station is pretty much my hot spot for taking photos. I can photograph the gas chambers and the steelworks and and, uh, and the warehouses across the road and, and other subjects of interest. One of my favourite ph photography spots. And yeah, that's also where I shot the ectochrome film too. I did my shots around Cringilla Station and of course around around other areas of, of Port Kimball Steelworks. So that was pretty much my subject for shooting my movie film with. I shot both of these films the same day too. Anyway, yeah, ectochrome film and ectocolor film. Anyway, that's pretty much about it for this video, and yeah, stay tuned uh, for when I've uploaded, I've got this uh, movie film digitised and uploaded to YouTube, and which will be probably maybe a month or two down the track when I can round up some money to pay for my friend uh, Dan Victoria to transfer them for me. And uh, this extra colour film, I'll, ha I'll soon have it uploaded to my Flickr page as um, soon as they dry I can scan and upload it <laughs> well, anyway that's pretty much about it hope you enjoyed this video this is Troy from Troy's Visual Arts channel signing out